Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at Endgame Gears XM1 RGB, upgraded with, uh, well, RGB. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so today's video will be taking a look at Endgame Gears XM1 RGB. Not the R version, which we looked at a little while back, which if you want to check out a non-RGB version, you can click on the links up here and you can check that in more detail. And also there's a pretty cool mouse bungee as well, which may be of interest to you to go either with this one or the XM1R. This one was sent to us free of charge for review purposes. Uh, I did actually reach out to Endgame Gear because after they sent me the previous one, which was the non-RGB version, that was one of the things I actually didn't like about it. It was a great mouse, but I like my RGB, so when I saw that there was actually an RGB version out and it came in uh, four different colours, I figured, why not? I'll hit them up, see what they say. And they were very obliging and said, yeah, which one would you like? So I actually went with the satin matte black finish. There are also a kind of like a crystalline black version, a white version, etc, etc. We'll take a look at that when we take a look at their website a little bit later on. But essentially there should be a shape, size and colour to fit most needs. When it comes to specifications, also as well, there is pretty much nothing to complain about here. The sensor is using the Pixar 3389 sensor, which is essentially kind of top of the line these days. Also as well, the switches are using the Kel 4.0 switches, all of which have been hand-picked at the factory to uh, give you that longevity. Also, they're also matched as well, so they should all sound and feel exactly the same, which uh, yeah, is absolutely awesome. A lot of time and effort has been put into the actual build, the crafting, the design, the components of this mouse, to give you a long life and exceptional gameplay. And also as well, if you're uh, just one of those people who just wants to use a decent mouse in your Windows or video editing environment, this will definitely tick the box. And ticking the box will be very, very easy to do because this has got a DPI of up to 1600 DPI, and obviously that is selectable. There are various levels built in, so you can switch between kind of 400, 800, 1600, 3200, etc., etc all of which are configurable actually in the software, which we'll take a look at on the laptop later, or you can just press the button on the bottom of the mouse and cycle through them. You don't need the software. There is actually a button on the bottom, which is dual function. So that can choose between either your sensitivity settings, or if you press and hold it, it can go through the actual connectivity with a USB. So you've got different polling rates, I think it's like 250, 500 and a thousand. So yeah, most of those things are taken care of without the need for any software. But again, if you do want to have a little bit more control, there are three individual RGB lighting zones on here. There is one on the wheel, one on the tail of the mouse, which is the actual logo, and also you've got the one around the peripheral edge, which is uh, all individually controllable. So you could have uh, red, white, and blue if you're particularly patriotic at the moment in the United Kingdom, or again, whatever you like. The choice is entirely up to you. Or if you want to, you can actually turn it all off, although if you're going to turn it all off, you might as well just buy the XM1R. So that's enough of that. Let's uh, do a quick unboxing, see what we actually get. I'll go through some of the specs on the box and then we'll take a look at the software and then I'll give you my opinion. Now, I've actually been using this for a few weeks now. I figured it'd be best to actually see what it's like long-term wise, use it on my daily driver, use it for video editing, gaming, all those types of different things and give you my honest feedback. So let's start with the packaging. Uh, yeah, packaging is awesome. If you got this as a gift, I think you'd be very pleased. So as you can see, Endgame Gear logo there, XM1 RGB, got a the mouse itself it is an ambidextrous mouse, although there are extra buttons on the left-hand side, but certainly I'm a lefty and I find no problem using it whatsoever. And other people that have tried using it with right hands, yep, no problem at all. So this is suitable for pretty much everybody. It also incorporates a lightweight design. Now that is in thanks to two parts, one of which is the actual cable itself to connect the mouse to your device. That is a very, very lightweight cable, very uh, slim and easy to flex, all that kind of usual stuff and also the mouse itself. So you're looking at 82 grams, which is pretty lightweight for this kind of mouse with this level of technology inside it. Also as well, it says about the Pixar sensor as we discussed, so 50 to 16,000 DPI or CPI using the Pixar 3389 sensor. And also you've got less than one millisecond analog technology responses in those kale switches. On the back of the box, it pretty much goes through exactly the same thing again, telling you the same sort of spec about the hand pick switches, etc., etc. but certainly all those things are nice to know. So let's see what we actually get. Now this obviously this isn't going to be a surprise to me because I've been using it, but to you out there in viewer land, you may find this interesting. So we get the, the mouse itself, which is uh, pretty obvious. Also you get a Endgame Gear leaflet as well, which tells you about how to download the software and links, etc. And if you've got any problems, issues, or basically how to use the mouse all on one piece of card, which is awesome. No crazy manuals to look through. 
Next up, we get the mouse itself. And as you can see, this is finished in that kind of nice satin matte black finish. It's got a slightly rubberized textured feel to it. One downside of that is it does pick up fingerprints. And certainly at the moment here in the UK, things are warming up a little bit. Also, I'm just kind of recovering from somewhat of a little cold. So uh, yeah, a little bit hotter, a little bit sweatier. So this does mark. So if you're looking for a mouse that doesn't mark, I would suggest go for the, the smooth one with the, like, the glossy finish to it. That is a fantastic one for not showing up marks. Although in certain lighting, obviously you may see something, but this one actually in the satin finish does tend to show up more marks than the others I found. The mouse itself has got the two normal buttons and they're individual buttons as well, so they're not plastically connected to anything, so they're all separate. And you've got those really nice clicky clicky switches, so I'll give you a demonstration of those. So this is the left click. Pretty much anywhere on the mouse, depending where, obviously, how long your fingers are, etc. It feels pretty much the same actual kind of uh, force needed across the entire button, which is really nice. So even if you're clicking pretty much at the top end, it's pretty much the same force used all the way through. So that may be useful to some people. The right mouse button again, pretty much the same. Although there is a little bit of an echo from the plastic. Hopefully you can pick that up. Anyway. The buttons are fantastic. You've got the scroll wheel in the in the middle, so again, really nice and clicky. The mouse button itself is a little bit on the small side for me personally. I would have preferred it to be a little bit bigger, but certainly gets the job done. And the indentations are really finely done. They're not particularly hard to get, so there is a does roll relatively easily, but you can feel those indentations. So for things like uh, scrolling in Windows, obviously, no problems there. And for changing weapons in certain titles like CSGO, etc., which is what I generally tend to play. Uh, yeah, it's been absolutely fine. And I do find it very accurate, especially when trying to switch to grenades or whatever. Works very, very well. Looking at the bottom part of the shell, then, yeah, again, decent quality plastic. You've got a illuminated logo on the back there. And on the left-hand side, we've got the additional two buttons. Again, these are using the Kel switches also. So really nice, really clicky, really tactile. And for me, they're almost the perfect positioning, even though I use it in a slightly unconventional way, because I am obviously left-handed. So I tend to use my uh, wedding ring finger to actually go through and use those buttons. So actually in game, it does feel pretty good. And for me, it feels very natural. Although for a lot of people, when you're watching this and you're thinking a lefty using those buttons on the side, it's just unnatural. Well, yeah, it kind of is. But either way, if you're using it right-handed, Again, they're in a really nice comfy position. The mouse itself is really well weighted, really well balanced. The actual shape itself is really nice. It's got kind of quite a nice hump to it. So it's not really flat. I don't like flat mice. They feel really weird. But yeah, this is really nice, really grippy. And it's actually a little bit smaller than some. So you can actually get a really good grip all over it, which I personally prefer. Obviously that is down to the individual. Some people prefer a, a tiny mouse, but I, I really like this. It's kind of like a medium sized mouse in my opinion. Looking at the bottom of the mouse, so we've got these really new Teflon glides. They work really well, and I've been using it actually on Endgame Gear's mouse pad as well, which obviously the combination of the two together is absolutely fantastic. But even if you're using just a, a plain surface, it still skates around really nice and easily. You can hear it's a little bit rough. That is down to this table being pretty awful, but certainly still does move around. But if you want to use the mouse pad, it does skate around much, much easier. So yeah, there's a very, very little resistance there, which I, again, personally, I do prefer. Also on the bottom, you've got obviously the sensor, which is slap bang in the middle, which is a, a fantastic place for it to be. I do find with some mice, they tend to be offset, which is a little bit weird in some instances. This is centralized, so yeah, it's very ambidextrous. Underneath, it gives you some information about how the button works on the bottom. So basically, you can press that button and that'll cycle through the preset DPI settings, press and hold it, and it'll go through and change the polling rate for the USB. The skates themselves, quite a nice large skate at the front and nice rounded one at the rear. Works very, very well. So let's plug it in so you can see what it actually looks like and we'll take a look at some of the software actually in Windows. When will USB-C be a thing for mice? Make your life a lot easier. Anyway, so there we go. There is the uh, the mouse lit up. You've probably seen this already from some of the B-roll I've shot a ton of B-roll this already because I actually do like looking at it. It just looks like a really nicely 
finished mouse. So we've got RGB starting from the very front there, going all the way around the back in one complete unit, all the way back up to that front side there. Nothing actually on the very front, obviously not much point, you're never going to see it, but certainly from pretty much most angles you will see a little bit of RGB if that is your thing. Also as well, you've got the RGB actually in the mouse wheel itself. Again, three individual lighting zones, so you can have them all set up differently if you wanted to. And also on the back, obviously, you've got the Endgame Gear logo, which is illuminated also. The logo itself is slightly indented into it, so it's not entirely smooth there. It doesn't really make a great deal of difference because of when you're actually holding the mouse, your kind of palms away from that, but some people may find it slightly irritating. Personally, I don't notice it at all, but I just thought I'd mention it. So RGB-wise, yeah, very nice. And actually the color transitions, which again, you've probably seen from the B-roll already, the color transitions are actually really good and very smooth. It just kind of glows around really nicely. Which again, I appreciate. It does look very nice. The colors seem to flow very well. Yeah, top notch. So let's take a look at the software and we'll take a look at some of the settings. So. I've actually got their website open at the moment, so this is the Endgame Gear site, you can see. So there's a black version of the mouse, which you can see there. There's also the Dark Frost, which, uh, yeah, again, a bit different, looks nice though. Then you've got the uh, kind of Arctic White, which is really cool. And also then you've got the Dark Reflex as well, which is like the glossy finish, but with a darker accent to it. So yeah, all pretty good. Again, it's using low friction PTFE glides, etc., etc. Uh, yeah. I've pretty much gone over all the specs there. You can actually on their site as well, you can go through, check out the specifications. Also as well, you've got things like downloads as well. So there's the downloads for the XM1, RGB, as you can see there, so software configuration version, very easy to do. There's also a firmware recovery tool for the flashing, if the flashing ever goes wrong. And it's got the approximate street price there at the moment. If you buy it directly from their site at the moment, it's 62.99, which for some people may be a lot of money for a mouse. I I'm tending to agree with you, although it's one of those things you, with the sensor of this quality and also those kale switches, they don't grow on trees, genuinely they don't, so you do have to pay a premium for them. And also if you look out for other mice of a similar specification, 1600 DPI, kale switches, Pixar 33 89 sensor, you're going to be paying a lot of money. There's no real way around that. Quality parts are going to cost you money. And it's got an exceptional build quality. Again, the cable is great, so yeah. I think it's justified in this price. It is a lot more than some people are prepared to pay, and I totally get that. But again, if you want something quality, you're gonna have to pay for it. I have actually found as well, it's kind of hunting around, you can pick them up a little bit cheaper. I did notice on Amazon, they're slightly cheaper as well, and also obviously things like eBay, Craigslist, all that kind of stuff. If you want to pick one up, you can probably get yourself a bargain. There aren't that many for sale, to be honest with you, so people that are buying them generally aren't selling them on, so. Yeah, I would say Amazon possibly might be one of your better bets if you want to get a small save in. So let's take a look at the actual software. So I've downloaded and pre-installed the software. And as you can see, this is the XM1 RGB config software. So we've got the buttons. So individually programmable buttons, all five of them there. And if you look at the ones, you've got options for left click, right click, etc. You can choose a specific keyboard key if you want to for certain games. Or if you want to, you can actually disable a button. So if the side buttons aren't your thing for certain titles, then you can go ahead and disable those into sensor, so you can choose your sensitivity and also a color for your sensitivity. So if you want to, you can go into there, choose red, click on apply. So now 400 is red, so let's go with yellow for 800. And if we go with green for 300 and blue for 3200, there you go. So one, two, three, and four, you can set your individual colors and those are represented as well from the LEDs on the bottom of the mouse there. So yeah, it's all very easy, very straightforward. And if you want to, you can change the uh, the DPI settings, just go into the DPI, you can either click on the up and down buttons to adjust it in increments, or if you want to, just go into it and press the, uh, the backspace key, type in your resolution. So let's go 1600 and hit apply. And there you go. So now the fourth setting, the blue setting is 600 DPI. So all well and good, you've got ripple control, turn on or off, you've also got the lift off. So the lift off distance is normally two mil. If you want to, you can change that to three mil. Again, down to the individual on that one. Click apply, you make your changes. Next one is the light section. So in the lighting section, there's a few options. So you've got color flow RGB, which is what we're currently on at the moment. You've also got color cycle RGB. So if I apply that one, 
that is just like your standard Colorflow RGB, the old Aurora sync, that kind of thing. Also as well, you've got Comet, which you can go through and that basically just spins around as you can probably see. You can change the speeds, etc., and the brightness. And also you've got breathing, which you can choose the individual colors. So again, wheel, logo, or the ring itself, you can change all different colors. So let's go turn off color sync. So we'll have individual colors. We'll go red there and we'll go blue. So click apply. And there we go. So we've got the red light on the back, green light on the wheel, blue light on the side, all breathing. Yeah, very nice if you want to do that. Uh, solid you can do as well. So solid colors, again, exactly the same thing. So they just stay on all together. But uh, yeah, for me, I think the uh, we'll stick with Unicorn Puke. Next up, we've got the update section. So you can go into here to update the firmware, etc. I've actually updated the firmware on this one today. So we're on version 1.01. Uh, it doesn't say what it actually changes in the updates, but yeah, I guess an update is there for a reason, so I've done it. Very easy to do. Also, if you're not sure, or you've got settings in the mouse and it's not right, or maybe you're giving it to someone else, whatever, you can just click on reset and it'll do a full factory reset of the mouse, all the colors, firmware, DPI settings, the whole works. Also as well, you can update the software. So you can click on the button and it'll just take you back to the End Gaming Gear website so you can download the latest version. And also if you're getting problems, they've got the support page so you can click on there to read the FAQs and there's contact information and a clickable link to their support. So yeah, overall actually a pretty decent software setup. Everything you really would want in there, I guess is in there. If there isn't anything in there, do let us know. I'd be interested to know if there's anything specifically you'd like to see. Uh, there isn't a improve aim button, that would be very nice to do. I could do use that very often. But overall, I think this is a, again, Endgame Gear have done us proud. They've come out with a mouse with high spec, high build quality, great RGB control, even down to the cable. The cable is really nice, just very soft and flexible, so it doesn't kind of snag or anything on surfaces. Just a really, really good mouse. And I don't know why Endgame Gear are not massive at the moment. People are aware of them. People know the name and some people have heard the name, but quite often I'll, there's people that I speak to and they'll say, well, no, not seen it about. So let me know in the comment section, have you seen Endgame Gear actually in your local stores or online? I'd be really interested to know where it's available. In the UK, it seems to be available from places like Overclockers and Scan, that sort of thing, Amazon, obviously, but not many other places. So yeah, do let us know where you've seen Endgame Gear. Be interested to hear what your thoughts are. As always, let us know what your thoughts are on this mouse in general. Is £60 too much for a mouse like this, being that it is kind of slightly what I would consider off-brand, i.e. it's not one of the big kind of the top three players in the industry. I always like to sort of champion the underdog as much as I possibly can, so for that reason, yeah, they get my utmost respect. And also for the quality of the product, you really can't go wrong. So if you do want to pick up one of these, I'll put some links in the video description below. They will be affiliated links, all that usual kind of stuff. But certainly I would suggest if you are on the lookout for a high quality gaming mouse or just a, a general purpose mouse for using on your PC but you want a little bit more quality, definitely, definitely worth checking out. So this has been the N Game Gear XM1 RGB. I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.